Okay, so we are live on Facebook and really excited to have in the studio um, uh, L. Peter Callender, uh, starring as Louis Armstrong in Sashmo um, at the Wardoff, directed by Ted Lange. And we're going to, uh, it's at the San Jose stage, just opened last week, right? Yes, we just opened on Saturday. Right, yeah, and and I hear it is a performance not to be missed within Peter. Everything you do is like, oh man, um, it's everything you do, everything you touch is phenomenal. And and you're such a character um, driven actor. I mean, anyone, any character that you embody, you people think, oh, Louis Armstrong is back, like in the flesh. And and it's just so exciting um, that particular play um, to be doing it now um, on the year anniversary of the, the playwright's passing. I don't know if that was intentional or not. It's such an honor. And then to be honoring Louis Armstrong, you know, the father of jazz, born in 1901. That was a long time ago. And, you know, so much has happened, you know, and, you know, in his life, you know, could have been a tragedy, but, yeah. you know, it, it wasn't. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. No, we, 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 must, uh, we must always celebrate uh, Louis Armstrong. Without, without him, a lot of the, our contemporary jazz uh, musicians uh, wouldn't have the star power um, that they do have now because they all, all followed in Louis Armstrong's footsteps. Um, and I am not saying anything that any major contemporary jazz a trumpeter, or jazz player um, would not say him, her, or themselves. They know that Louis Armstrong uh, started it for them. Miles Davis would say that. Um, certainly, my uh, my colleagues, um, Marcus Shelby, would say that. I don't think there's anybody that wouldn't say that um, in, in in today's contemporary jazz uh, medium. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, I yeah. heard that Marcellus, which Marcellus plays the trumpet, Winton. Winton, Winton Marcellus said to Ken Burns that very thing, which mm. was one of the impetus to doing that whole documentary on jazz, was because of Winton Marcellus and he was talking about Louis Armstrong, Louis Armstrong. Right. Correct. Mm. Right. Yeah. And yeah. regarding regarding the um, the one year anniversary of uh, our playwright uh, Terry Teachout, no, I, I don't know if that was specifically planned. But we um, and Ted and I have spoken about this in rehearsals. Um, we we owe Terry Teachout um, a great deal of gratitude because Ted in 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 in, uh, in rehearsal and he will elaborate on this. We we spoke about as we broke down the piece. We spoke about how deliberately Terry worked in certain aspects of Lewis's life with Blazer, with Miles with the, the Jewish family and how carefully he threaded these pieces in in the right place at the right time. It's, it's quite a unique piece of um, documentarian writing because we, we, we learn so much about Louis Armstrong, yet we learn about the time. We learn about the racism that's going on. We learn about certain political aspects that was going on in the country as well. And mm -hmm. we also learn about how he first got his first horn. I don't think, unless you read a biography, you you wouldn't you wouldn't know that. And and that specificity coming from uh, this playwright is is enormous. So we owe Terry Teachout a great deal of gratitude. Mm -hmm. Yeah, certainly, certainly. Um, and um, so I just I I had known that that you and T uh, Ted were like good friends, like. 30 years, like, oh my goodness, you call him on the phone, and say, hey, Wanda wants to talk to you this morning. He's like, sure. <laughs> and here I, he is. I'm grateful. You know, that is I'm pretty grateful. awesome. I'm grateful for that. Um, uh, I, I acknowledge Ted as, as a big brother. Um, we go back a few years. It's, it's, not, it's not the kind of um, uh, that we are in touch every day, but once, once, once you've met Ted Lange, you've, you've been blessed. There's a there's something that happens in your life that you never forget, um, and it was about over 30 years ago when we first met, more than that actually, um, and I called him up when I first did this virtually. 
um, I called him up and I said, uh, hey, Ted, um, I'm doing Louis Armstrong virtually. This was a year and a half ago. Um, would you be able to, are you interested in directing? And instantly he jumped on board. Mm -hmm. um, and I called him again this time and instantly he jumped on board. Um, so that's well, what- Well, the fun thing was, about this was it wasn't virtual, it was us in person. Yeah. And I wanted to have that experience with your talent that we were in person bouncing off each other, you know? Yep. And it was a delight. It <laughs> was a thing. delight to see you grab hold of this character and wring every juicy piece of stuff <laughs> out of the material. You, you should, Wanda, it's, it's really an amazing, amazing tour de force because he's not only playing Satchmo, he's playing a Jewish manager He's playing Miles Davis, you know, I, I it's just amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And I and I just think, Peter, you know, um, you know, you're Caribbean born and and I think about New Orleans, you know, it's a Caribbean um country, you know, they call it a state, but it's really a country. Yeah. <laughs> and 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 just sort of like that synergy, you know, of of the personal and the professional. And this character that you you breathe life into, and then you know Ted, you know, uh, you know you're Bay Area. I think were you born in Berkeley? Yeah, I was raised in, in Berkeley. Yeah, right, right. Oakland. Yeah, yeah. And you know, good friends with your mom Jerry and your brother um, Michael. Yeah, and they just yeah. had their their birth uh, anniversaries last month, and you know, I shared to both their memories. And yeah. so I was wondering if we could talk a little bit about place um, and. Uh, you know, and sort of how, you know, you bring some, you bring that to, to the role, Peter, is that why you wanted to, to do this? Oh, I wanted to do this um, because it's, it's a real person. And I get, I get to listen to his voice. I get to watch his mannerisms. I get to listen to his music. I get to read about him. So that helps me a lot. And then this, uh, this incredible writing um, it just falls out of my mouth. It's 38 pages of text that I've got to keep up here and then and then say them in order. Um, uh, but then but then I, and I, I keep saying this and, and Ted, I, you know, brother, my friend, I, I, I would not. And I told the folks at San Jose Sage this. I said I would not have I, I was not interested in doing it without Ted. Mm. Wow. Um, thank you. Because I know I know I know how Ted works. And I know Ted Ted fills up a room, and not only his personality, but the stories he tells and the way he he <laughs> the way he expresses himself to the actor, not not in don't do this and don't do that. It's how about and how about and when I was and I remember this actor and I remember and you if you listen to what he says, that guides you as an actor if you really listen, because he's. He's sharing these stories of how actors behaved and when this happened and when that happened and when this producer said that and when I was young and what a dad, my dad told me this story and my dad told me this story and, this, and I'm listening. I'm like, and all of that is becoming a part of my expression as an actor, right? And I, I think that's unique. I've learned so much as a director from Ted. That's so unique. And I, I just, I just love the journey from the first line to the last moment is so epic. And I, I, I wish everybody can come through and see this play because, not because I'm in it, yes, thank you, but because it's, it's, it speaks so much about this man and American history and jazz and says, if you think you know Louis Armstrong, no, you know, no. no. Yeah, and the language is uh, the forewarned. The language is not for, very not, contemporary, and no. that you know he wasn't afraid of calling it like it is. And if a few cuss words had to dro be dropped in there, he wasn't afraid to do that. Now you don't have that picture of Armstrong in the movies or in television appearances, mm -hmm. but this guy Teach Out really brought it home on who this guy was, which peels back the mask that he had to wear 
That's in order to survive. And I mean, Armstrong was fantastic because he could read what he needed to do in order to play his music. It's really important. Yep. And mm -hmm. Peter embodies this conflict that this guy had to go through in order to be the best musician he could be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, Peter, how did you prepare um, for this for this role? Because um, a lot a lot of his um, Louis Armstrong Louis Armstrong's work is is in an archive. Um, I'm not sure where it's located, mm -hmm. but I know when I was looking at the playwrights. Um, preparation, you know, we, when he wrote Pops, you know, the biography, and then when he wrote the play, I mean, he listened to hours and hours and days and days of archives because Louis Armstrong documented himself. He I'm did. like, oh my God, this is so cool. He had a tape recorder. Yeah. And he, he documented did. himself. I was and wondering, that's, yeah. And that's all, that's also part of the play. Mm -hmm. uh, when, when your audiences come to see the show at San Jose stage, they will see that he's actually recording himself because he said, that's, I'm gonna write a new book. So there is actually a tape recorder that's running throughout the entire piece, it's reel to reel because it was in those days. Um, mm -hmm. But you know, as, as far as preparation, Wanda, it's um, for me, I, I work inside out. I, I, I wanna make sure that I have the essence of the character. So as I said earlier, I watch a lot of videos a lot of YouTube. YouTube is very helpful for actors these days. Um, read a lot about him. I've got a, some um, books at home. Um, and Ted Ted has met had met uh, Louis Armstrong. So Ted Ted's oh yes, please Ted talk yeah. about. It. Well, when I was a kid, I was twenty one, and I was appearing in the musical Hair in Vegas, and in one of the other rooms uh, was Louis Armstrong. So I, I had a book that I carried around uh, that was the history of Black drama and Black theater. And uh, I went down into the basement of this uh, uh, nightclub room in the International Hotel and I got him to sign my book. And he was just a sweet, lovely man. You know, sweet, lovely man. And he took the time with me, asked me how I was doing as he's giving me his autograph. It was wonderful. And that's the kind oh. of man Louis Armstrong was. Um, yeah. Tortured in ways, um, uh, struggling in a lot of ways, dealing with the fact that, that black folks um, stopped coming to see him because they thought he was uh, playing up to the audiences, playing up to a certain demographic of people, um, um, you know, him wondering why, why, why are my own, are my own people not coming downtown to see me anymore? Mm -hmm. What about you know what 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 is that? And he struggled throughout his career with that, but he was the first. He was the first black entertainer to be on the cover of Time magazine. He was the first to go down south with, with um, a mixed band to play in the deep, deep, deep South. It says in the, in the, in the play, you, 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 you did that back then, you coming home in a box, but he did that. He was outspoken about politics. We learned so much about it in, in the play. So yes, he struggled a lot, but he maintained a certain poise, a certain dignity through it all. And even in his last days, because he died four months after this appearance at the Waldorf Astoria, mm -hmm. so even in those days, he was still out there entertaining, knowing fully well that his time was waning on this mm -hmm. on this planet. But there he was still smiling, still playing his horn, still making people smile until the last until his last literally his last note. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I just Very think about. The location, um, the Wardoff Astoria, you know, that's like Buckingham Palace, right? <laughs> Correct. I mean, you I'm, have arrived. Yes. It, imagine this, 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 at, at seven years old, he was, he was loading coal on a, on a, on a wagon going about selling it in, in, in Storyville. 
he was he was um, picking through garbage cans to, to find pieces of vegetables that were not too spoiled that he would go sell, right? And he says in the play, how come here I am at the Waldorf Astoria? How do I get to be that lucky? Mm -hmm. sleeping, sleeping in the Waldorf. <laughs> That's correct. When in other, and through his career, he couldn't even stay in a hotel. That's correct if it was white owned. Right, and he was one of the first black artists to, as he puts it, crack the white hotels because a lot of black artists weren't allowed in the, he's, he's staying in a hotel in North Dakota that they would not even allow a black man to walk into the lobby. But there he is sleeping in the deluxe suite, right? So it's, it's, it's an amazing balance what this man has come from and his humility toward every race. Mm -hmm. it's amazing it's just it's it's a, it's quite a story mm -hmm. yeah yeah and then um you know sort of the whole idea of being um giving the people what they want um you know that story of hello dolly is really interesting the song mm -hmm. yeah yeah and um <laughs> i was wondering are, are there any other moments um in the play that you know just you know, just are just so riveting to you or any parts of the play that are difficult for you? Well, um, you know, you know um, Ted may have um, stories uh, about this piece and about the rehearsal process. Um, but for me, um, you know, you mentioned, you mentioned Hello Dolly. Um, you know, it was, it was quite, it was quite the relationship between Lewis and um, um, black folks back then, Lewis and his manager Glazer, Lewis and Miles Davis. Um, and there's a, there's a part of the play and I won't give it away where, and Lewis and Dizzy Gillespie as a matter of fact, right? Um, and there's a part of the play where um, Lewis feels a little bit betrayed by something that Dizzy Gillespie says. Um, mm -hmm. And then they go on TV together on an all-star show. And um, the audience has, your audience has to come see the show to, to see how this story ends. But it's a beautiful story. Um, so I, to me, I didn't, I didn't have any major um, stumbling blocks. I guess my, 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 my only, um, not trouble necessarily, but my only um, heavy, heavy lifting was the, the voices, the characters, the three unique characters, because Lewis at that time was dying. Literally, he was dying. Mm -hmm. So his mannerisms, his vocal quality, his physicality was waning. But then I've got to switch to, a, to his manager, who is this, this white Jewish dude who is very staccato. Who vibrant. Very, vibrant. Very vibrant. If, 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 if Lewis... If Lewis was was a was a, a cello, which which gives that tone, right? And then you have um, Glazer, who is more of a um, I don't know, violin, you know that sort of instrument. So if you look at the entire piece as an orchestration, mm -hmm. right? That's how I look at it, mm -hmm. as movements as part of an orchestration, right? Then it all it all comes together beautifully. So. As far as my rehearsal process is concerned, Ted made it. Ted made it just as smooth as possible, and we worked. We worked together. We worked diligently together. Um, there were times when I'm like, Ted, I ain't got it. I don't got it today. <laughs> Ted, my voice is hurting. Ted, I got it. And he's like, No, let's stop. Let's stop. Let's stop. Let's no, 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 no. Let's make sure that you're okay. Yeah. Let's make sure. No, we we can stop right here. Go home. Get some rest. It was great. Because then I went home, got rest. The next day he says, you look, you look great. And we'd rehearse for like seven hours, Ooh. right? So he guided me very, very well. And you, you know a story I like? I like the Christmas tree story. Yes, yes. Because it solidifies his relationship with his wife. Yes. You know, and you'd have to come see it. But it's a really poignant moment when Satchmo explains this Christmas tree yeah. that his wife put up in a hotel room to celebrate Christmas, you know? Yeah, 
That's it. it's very sweet. And yeah. Peter does this loving thing of him him enjoying his wife, you know, and him understanding who his wife is. He understands who his wife is, and he hits that note just. It's perfect. It's like a husband, you know. Um, but yeah. that goes to teach out giving him the text and then Peter hitting a home run. Thank you, Ted. Yeah. Yeah, it's a wonderful, yeah that was beautiful. Piece of I, I, look I look forward to the, to the very first note I play and then the very last note I play. I look forward to it every night. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's good stuff. Yeah. So how do you... Um, Peter, do you play the trumpet? I do not. Okay. I do not. But I'm he not. looks like he does. Yeah. That's the thing. <laughs> he <laughs> looks like this guy handles his horn so well. You swear he plays the trumpet. Some people have asked me after the show, do I play the trumpet? And I no, I don't. But as as an actor, you have to you that's that's the thing. You have to handle the instrument as Lewis did. You know, you have to, I watch him, I watch photographs. I, I, I uh, teach out, uh, our playwright talks about what this trumpet means to Lewis in the show. So I took that very, very seriously. So the way I handle it, I don't want it to seem like something that I've never held in my hand before. I even have a trumpet at home that I got to walk around with in my own house, just so I can become more tactile with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So would you say that the spirit of Louis Armstrong, Louis Armstrong is, is in you, like as you, you know, as you are in this role right now, that he is actually living with well, you as well? Well, you know, I, I, I don't want to get too ethereal about it, Wanda. I, I, I do believe that if I, as an actor, um, embody Okay, I'll tell. I'll, I'll give you a quick, quick, quick example. I played um, um, Robert Mugabe. You know who Robert? When I, I, I saw you in that, yes. Right. You were and, great. And I watched a lot of. I watched a lot of video. Mm -hmm. The way he speaks, the dialect, the way he sits, the way he buttons his jacket, everything. Right. Mm -hmm. And some students, uh, some expats from Zimbabwe, spoke with me after the show. And said, one woman said to me, and she embraced me. She was like, this is the closest I will ever be to my president. Mm. Right? Mm. This is the closest I will ever be to my president. And mm. as an actor, my God, that's all, that's all you need to hear. Because you have to do the work. This is a live person. This is not someone that's made up by a playwright. Another, another man walked up to me afterwards, after the show, tall white man. And he says, uh, he introduces himself and he says, um, first of all, I want to thank you for a wonderful show. I said, well, thank you very much. He says, no, no, you don't, you don't really understand. He said, I, I was a lawyer for Robert Mugabe. Mm -hmm. I knew Robert Mugabe. I was in rooms with him several times. And as I sat there watching you, my God, I was, I was in a room again with Robert Mugabe. And he says, you have no idea. I, I, I did not want to come see this because I didn't want some ham actor doing this uh, and I would be I would not be happy I may have to get up and leave but then he came back twice to see the show so as an as an actor especially when you're portraying someone that's alive or had been alive it's it's up to you have to look it up you have to see the way he walks you have to listen to his to his um um, you watch his gait. You have to listen to his voice. You have to listen to his mannerisms. You have to. It's it would be it would be derelict of you as an actor not to do that. It's all there. It's all there for us, right? So yes, I I I would like to think that L Louis Armstrong's um, spirit comes out in the in the in the show. Lovely. I would like that very much. But my job is to just let go of Peter for an hour and 50 minutes. Let go of Peter, because people are not coming to see Peter, they're coming to see the transformation that happens. And I think that's what I, that's what I attempt to do every night. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I was just reading that, um, you know, Terry Teachout's birthday was February 6th, which was- um, 
wow. that day. <laughs> wow. Wow. I'm like, oh my goodness, you know, and then he made his transition on January 13th, you know, last year, wow. as we already mentioned. Um, so, uh, yeah, I just well, think- Maybe his spirit is in there too, who knows? Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, what, what a wonderful, um, you know, um, service to, to everyone, you know, all of us, that he mined this treasure. Yeah, you know, in this in these multiple works, because Armstrong, um, he also wrote autobiographies, um, you know, so so he documented himself, you know, both with the tape recorder That's and right. in writing. That's I mean, right. he was so brilliant about about the legacy that he was, you know, at the beginning of. Yes, you know, and the whole idea around that. I was wondering if you could talk a little bit, both of you, about you know these characters, you know, that you are that are also in the room with Armstrong, um, I think, um, uh, in the play. Ted, do you want to take that or you? Yeah, uh, you know, if anything knows, if anybody knows anything about Miles Davis, he was an angry young man. Mm. And uh, some people may know that he would be on stage and he'd turn his back on the audience. And that's how we introduce, <laughs> that's how we introduce Miles Davis. His back is to the audience. Because that's he was an angry guy. And uh, he was a smart guy. And uh, Peter captured Miles, <laughs> you know, the voice inflection, the the confidence of Miles. And then he does this slow turnaround and he says, take this down. <laughs> I love that moment, man. I love yeah. that moment. So yeah, um, Miles Davis is a different ball game and it's a contrast to Satchmo. And we see, and again, we see the difference between the two. Mm -hmm. And Peter has done an excellent job of that so that when Miles shows up, Every time he shows up in the play, you go, oh, yeah, okay, mm -hmm. you know? Miles. And um, that was 100% uh, on Peter. Yeah, thank you, Ted. And uh, the, audience, the audience will see three, three major characters, Lewis, Glazer, his manager, and Miles. And then there are other, you know, a gangster or two, a secretary, little, little other little characters that I try to bring to life. But those are the three major characters that the audience will see through Teach House writing. Um, and I try to make them as distinct as possible. Right, yeah, yeah. I wanna let our audience know, um, you know, that we're speaking to L. Peter Callender, who is um, the star <laughs> of, um, of Sashmo at the Word Up. And we're speaking to uh, Ted Land, who is the director of this star studded performance at the San Jose Stage Company, which is actually celebrating its 40th anniversary. I mean, and that's that's no small thing. 40th anniversary, congratulations. And I wanted to give you the information um, that you can get tickets by calling the box office, 408-283-7142, or online, um, the T-H-E stage, S-T-A-G-E dot O-R-G. And, uh, and you can also find out more information about this wonderful, um, wonderful performance, wonderful show, which is um, up through the 26th of this month. So you've got a couple of more weeks and you want to go early just in case you want to go back since this is, you know, like, um, you know, the year just began. So, you know, um, you want to make sure that you started off right. <laughs> Thank you, Wanda. It's very yeah. nice. Of you. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So um, anything else? I just loved um, what you mentioned, Ted, about, about the love story, uh, you know, the Christmas tree, because Louis Armstrong, he really loved his wife. And, and I know the story about Sashmo, like how did he become known as Sashmo? Um, that's another thing. I think you talk about that in the play, right? Or the, uh, no? No, no, we don't. Uh, uh, let me make sure that I'm saying that correctly. No, but you found you did research and you found out how he got it. Right now, there are you know just as with um, stories, folkloric tales, 
you know, somebody will say, oh, that's how that happened. No, wait, that's how that happened. So there are two main stories. One is that um, it was given to him by his Jewish family when he was very much, when he was younger. And it's, um, oh, I forgot the, the, the translation of it now, darn it. Um, but it was given to him, it was, it's, a, it's a Yiddish phrase meaning, and I cannot remember the phrase now, I'm so sorry. Um, the, other story, the other story is that when he was in London, um, a, a British reporter um, named him Satchel Mouth because he, you know, he, he has this big laugh, you know, that, and um, named him Satchel Mouth, and that became Satchmo. Satchel Mouth became Satchmo, um, mm -hmm. and he liked that, and so he kept that that um, that that title, that nickname, all his life, and he embraced it, mm -hmm. not as a negative, but as a positive. And right. he loved it. He loved being called Satchmo. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 But no, we don't we don't discuss it in, in the play. Interestingly enough, he does not tell that story in the play. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, I'd like you to talk a little bit more about about he and his wife. Well, he had he was married four times. And um, um, all four marriages, the, the first three um, uh, didn't work out for whatever reason. Um, uh, and he, and um, Lucille, his, his, his wife of um, 30 plus years um, and his last wife um, was the best. Um, he speaks of her very lovingly in the play. He says when he first saw her, he says, that's for me. Um, she adored him. He adored her. Um, they had an amazing friendship and relationship. And he says in the play, one of the things that he says in the play that he really appreciated about Lucille is that she knew the horn comes first. She knew that Louis Armstrong and his horn were the same, were together. And that comes first before his music came first before anything else. And I think maybe he mentioned that maybe because maybe the other wives didn't uh, feel that way ab about mm -hmm. Um, I know the first one, his second wife was a piano player mm -hmm. when uh, she was a piano player for the um, Joe Oliver um, Creole Jazz Band. Um, uh, and she she helped him along the way, however she helped him. And then his third wife helped him along the way, however she helped him. But Lucille was was it. That was the gold that he discovered. And sometimes it takes two, three marriages to find <coughs> that your eventual soulmate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, closing thoughts, um, Director uh, Ted Land, and then we'll let Peter Well, I, I wish everyone could see uh, Peter do this role because it's so wonderful. You watch him peel away the characters in this play. I just wish everybody could. I wish it was a movie. I'd love to mm -hmm. direct him in a movie of this, but that doesn't look possible but since we can't you can come out and see him in the play and you'll be wonderfully surprised at the uh articulation of satchmo mm -hmm. thank you ted yeah thank absolutely you. thank you so much and um it's a pleasure to do this um it's it's hard work but um it is, it is something that I prepare my mind and soul for every night. Um, and once once I hear that introduction, it's it. It's We're just, off and running, huh? We're off and running. Um, and it, <laughs> it don't stop till the lights come down. Don't stop till the lights come down. And um, it's, it's, it's an amazing journey. So please, if you have an opportunity, if you can't make it, send somebody. Mm -hmm. um, send somebody. Uh, put it on your Facebook page. If you can't make it, if you're watching this video and you're out of the state, out of the country, um, post it on your Facebook, post it on your Instagram, send somebody and then have them tell you what they saw because it is it is quite a unique, um, uh, it's under two hours, quite a unique uh, hour 50 of theater. Um, and as an actor, um, I'm very, very proud of what Ted and I and the team at San Jose Stage uh, has produced. I'm very, very proud of it. Yeah. yeah. 
Well, thank you both so much for this wonderful conversation. And um, I, you know, I know you're the rest of the round is going to be fabulous, Peter, because you thank are you, Peter, Peter Calendar. Thank you. <laughs> and you were, you know, your friend Ted Lange is the director. So, you know, Woo. man, like you're going to get all kind of awards, you know, Theater Bay Area Awards, you know, like. But, you know, that's that's <laughs> that's OK if that happens. Um, I just know that the work Ted and I produce is worthy of mm -hmm. of of our time and our existence and um, our voice. And that's that's my award. That's the mm -hmm. award that I that I receive every day was coming to work with Ted. Um, mm -hmm. um, and that's that I embrace that every day. So other other than that, everything else is icing on the cake. Um, and speaking these words and telling the story of this man, that's that's also my award. So I'm good, I'm good with all of that. And I appreciate your time today, Wanda. Thank you for this opportunity. Oh, you're quite welcome. And lastly, I was just wondering, I, I know this was supposed to be last, but yeah. I know um, sometimes, um, you know, actors have, you know, I wanna do these roles. And was this, was this one of them um, on your list? Okay, briefly. Um, Years and years ago, a director, um, a colleague of mine said, oh, yeah, there's this, there's this one-man show called Satchmo with the Waldorf. And that was the last of that. Then I saw, then I saw it at ACT, mm -hmm. right? And a mutual friend of ours, um, John Douglas Thompson, um, he, was, he performed it, right? And mutual yeah. friend of Ted as well. And I, I waited for him in the lobby. And he says, man, one day you got to do this. One day you got to do this. And I said, man, I don't know if I can do what you just did, but man, I was amazing. Um, so here I am doing it now. So it's been on my bucket list. Yeah, yeah. it was a, it was it was a gift. And when and when American Stage first offered it to me as a virtual, um, Ted is the first person I called. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's been a, it was a it was a bucket list of mine. And Ted is even talking about, oh, Peter, you should do this. This should be your signature show. This should be something you. I said, well, but Ted, if you if you're gonna hang with me, brother, I'll do it again. Yeah, we're okay. gonna we're gonna try to work it so that you know it just isn't in uh, San Jose that he gets to do it some other places mm. because the uh, it's so definitive. And I uh, we we looks like we may be going to the North Carolina Black Theater Festival, and wow. if we get there, there's a good chance we can find some other theaters. Uh, to present it in. So we'll keep you posted on that, Wanda. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's exciting. Oh, yeah. man. Yeah, because when I looked at the poster, I'm like, is that Peter? No, it's not Peter. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Very good. Yeah, it's Peter. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's excellent. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Well, thank you again, Wanda. Thank you so oh, much. You're quite welcome. Thank you both. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Ted, we'll talk soon, my friend. Okay, I'll, I'll see you, you later. later. Okay, buddy. <laughs> okay. Bye bye. Bye, bye. bye dear. Bye. Thank you. So I just want to let everyone know that um, you can get tickets by calling area code 408 283 7142 or online at www.thestage.org. And uh, yeah, yeah. Great way to, um, to celebrate a 40th anniversary. Uh, congratulations, San Jose Stage Company. Thanks for listening. Wanda's Picks, virtual.